presentation in our uh, language modeling section. And uh, it's called Word Sense Induction for the Automatic Construction of a Valency Dictionary of French Verbs. And uh, our speaker is Naima Hassett, and uh, the co-author is Francois Laroux. Hi, thank you for being here. So today I will actually present uh, a chapter of my master's thesis uh, in which I constructed automatically a dictionary of the valency of French verbs. And here I will present uh, one of the important subtasks of it, which is the word sense induction for deducing the word sense of those French verbs. So just a quick overview so you know what I will talk about uh, in this presentation. So uh, we created a method to induce the senses of French verbs without relying on an external resource. For that, we clustered contextualized embeddings taken from three language models, and we clustered them with three different clustering algorithms. The best results were achieved with a monolingual language model, Camembert, which means that it was only trained on French data, combined with the agglomerative clustering algorithm. And as a score, we obtained 58.19% uh, of F1 on 500 verbs taken from the Wixenai, which is the French Wiktionary. Okay, so first, what are valence dictionaries? Why do we want to make them? Valence dictionaries are useful in many natural language processing applications because they indicate precisely how a predicate expresses its argument in syntax. And usually they include information on selected part of speech, preposition, or case. Here is an example uh, taken from VerbNet, which is a popular valence dictionary um, in English. So uh, for the verb vanish here, we see on the left that vanish requires a noun phrase before and a prepositional phrase after. We have an example uh, here, a valuable manuscript vanished from the library. And in the syntax uh, part, we see that the preposition needed is from. So that's the kind of information we want to have in our dictionary. In French, we are lucky. We have many quality valence dictionaries that are already available in machine-readable formats. We have, for example, the LEF, which is the Lexique des Formes Fléchies du Français. We have Dicovalence. We have Verbenet, which is Verbenet's counterpart, Le Dictionnaire électronique des mots, and Les Verbes Français. The problem is that those dictionaries, they are, they are quality, but they were created at least in part manually. So either they were constructed entirely manually or they were constructed um, automatically but with a lot of corrections afterward. And that method is very costly, it requires highly strained staff and is harder to update too. So new senses are not necessarily there uh, easily. So our goal is to automate the construction of valency dictionaries. And one of the important subtasks of this is to automatically identify the polysemy of verbs. Why is it important? Let's take the verb change. Change can have many senses, but two of them are here. So let's take the, ch the sense modify, as in the discussion has changed my thinking about the issue. Here, we need a subject and an object. If we don't have an object, the sentence will be uh, incorrect. But the, with the sense become different, as in she changed completely as she grew older, then there's no object at all. There's only a subject. So that is why senses are crucial for valency dictionaries. To distinguish the senses, a common way to do that is by performing word sense disambiguation, WSD. Um, Word sense ambiguation are divided in two types, uh, two categories. They are knowledge-based methods. So these one use the content of existing resources like existing dictionaries to compare with the data on hand and deduce the word sense. So there are many methods for that, but for example, we could look for a definition dictionary and compare the content of the definition with what we have and deduce the word sense. 
There are also supervised methods. These uh, rely on sense annotated data, which comes from an existing bank of sense. So we have data that people annotated with the uh, senses that were already in another resource. And popular existing resources are, for example, WordNet, BabelNet, which is the multilingual counterpart of BabelNet, uh, of WordNet, and FrameNet. The problem with this approach um, for dictionary creation is that, well, we have to rely on lexical resources that already exist. And uh, there's a mm, known problem with these, is that often the senses listed in major lexical resources are too fine-grained, which means that even human annotators can't really distinguish between the differences between the senses listed in those lexical resources. Also, most resources are based uh, on English. And if we want to make something with French, well, there is uh, maybe a bias. Also, uh, relying on external resources in general prevents the discovery of new senses. So, um, a solution to that would be to use the non-supervised method, which is called, in this case, word sense induction. And, well, there's many methods, but here I will only talk about two, of, two tools, two concepts that we got inspired from. So the first one is context clustering, that was introduced by Schütze in 1998. And basically, he said that we can represent a word uh, from uh, the, its core occurrences. So at, on the left, we have a, a graph, 2D graph, uh, the x-axis is food and the y-axis is bank. And we can represent the word restaurant on this axis. So restaurant occurs more frequently with food than with bank. Uh, money uh, is the contrary. So money will occur more frequently in bank with bank than with food. And on the right, uh, we can um, have a context vector for stock which is calculated as the centroid, uh, the center or the sum of the vectors um, of the words that occur in the similar context. So stock will occur um, with in the same similar context as deposit, money, and account, and all of them are closer to bank than to food. That's a really basic example of context clustering. And of course, we have transformers that were um, introduced, introduced in 2017. And what's interesting with them is that they can do really good contextualized embeddings. So not static embeddings, but they can re uh, look at the context of the word and fine tune the, the embedding of the word we want uh, according to this context. And that's exactly what we want because when we create a dictionary, we'll have a ton of data uh, the same verb in uh, all kinds of contexts, and we want to differentiate uh, the senses of those verbs. So we need contextualized embeddings. So we tested three language model uh, transformer types. One monolingual model, called Camembert, and two multilingual models, XLM Roberta and T5. Then, once we extracted the embeddings with these models, we tested three clustering algorithms, uh, three popular clustering algorithms, so affinity propagation, HDB scan, and the one we ended up using, agglomerative clustering. Agglomerative clustering, how it works basically, is that it begins by assuming that every item in the data is its own cluster, and it merges them uh, iteratively until there's only one cluster that represents all the data. We have to set a parameter to, to tell the algorithm when to stop merging the clusters. Here we have uh, at 7,000 a red line that illustrates uh, when we, told, we tell the algorithm to stop. So here we have three clusters. We estimate the parameters because we 
we have three language models, we have three clustering algorithms, and we have parameters for the clustering algorithms. So we want to see which ones were the best. So we used for that French Semival. We're lucky to have that. Not all languages have that, but um, for, for our case, it was perfect. So this data set is made specifically for French verbs. The senses are taken from the Wiktionary, Wiktionnaire, um, because the authors uh, realized that the senses in the Wiktionary are more intuitive than the ones in WordNet, for example. And in this data set, we have 3,121 sense annotated sentences. In this sentences, we have 66 different verbs with each approximately 50 examples. Also, uh, we were aware of another uh, data set, which is called Multilingual and Crosslingual Word in Context Disintegration, WIC, which is the first semival task to test the ability of systems to distinguish the different word senses without an external resource. So basically, in the multilingual some task, we have two sentences with the same word on each sentence, and the system just has to decide, okay, as is this the word has the same meaning or not. So it's binary, true or false. Um, this data set had not only verbs, but adjectives, adverbs, and nouns too. So that makes the data set for us smaller. So here are the results. We tested the clustering algorithms, the language models, and we tried to get the best score for each, com each combination. We see that affinity propagation can go higher than 14%, 15%. So that's, uh, yeah, that's not good. Agglomerative clustering, however, especially with Camembert uh, contextualized vectors, performed pretty well with 65.39% F score on the French Semival data set. These scores were um, calculated with the entire French Semival data set, which means we have the 66 different verbs with the 50 examples each, and we cluster them all together. However, that's not how we want to, to, uh, to proceed with us, because we ha we'll have a ton of data for every verb. So we want to cluster each verb individually. So we tried that too. Um, for each of the 66 verbs, we took our data that we extracted previously, so 20,000 sentences in our case, we injected the 50 sentences from the data set, and we see how well they, they performed for those 50 sentences. And here we saw that, well, the, the measure, the F1 measure, cannot be the only factor we take into account for this, because here we see that the score uh, on the y-axis, it gets lower and lower the, the more the, the number of senses uh, gets higher. Um, I think it's because the recall gets higher when there is only one sense calculated per verb. But it's n n of no interest to us to have only one sense per verb. We, have a, we want to have at least two or three senses per verbs. So we have to strike a, a balance between those two. So we decided, okay, maybe uh, the WIC data set can help us, and the answer is uh, no, because they are not the same at all, um, and they have the same, uh, the different tendencies. So if we adjust the distance threshold, um, we see that WIC gets lower scores the more the distance threshold goes up, and French de Meval, it's the, it's the opposite. So the more the distance threshold goes up, the more the score goes up too. So it, it didn't help us for that. We stuck with French Semival. And the results, we tested our parameters on a subset of the Wiktionnaire. The Wiktionnaire contains 16,935 verbs in total. So it was quite impossible to like test on the whole Wiktionnaire, but we took a subset of 500 verbs, and our result is 58.19% of F1. 
on this, this core has 54% precision and 77% recall, so good recall compared to the precision. And uh, we have 2.23 senses per verb versus 4.73 in the gold data. So, in conclusion, here we propose a method for inducing the senses of verbs that is language independent, which means that as long as you have a language model in your language, uh, you can take contextualized embeddings and cluster them with the algorithmic clustering algorithm, and it will uh, probably help uh, okay uh, results. The parameters chosen, I tested different parameters, but they can easily be adjusted if you want more precision, more recall, you can adjust the parameters. Also, the model can be changed, the, alg the clustering algorithm can be changed, it all can be adjusted according to your needs. Our results are comparable to the state of the art. I say that even if it's hard to say with um, an unsupervised method, um, but just for uh, a comparison, the, there's a team, the Flaubert team, another um, a, a team that made another language model for French. They used Camembert with the French Semival data set, and they achieved 50% uh, of F1. So it's better still than, the, than, than them, even if they didn't use the same method at all and everything. But, you know, it's a, it's a point of comparison. Also, our results say that monolingual language models seem to be more suited than multilingual language models for this task. Thank you. Thank you. Time for uh, questions. Uh, what do you think? Why are the multilingual language models not so good? Why? Um, yeah. Well, I was wondering because some studies say that multilingual language models can can perform better in some cases. Um, but I guess, I mean, the, the intuitive reason is because when you're trained on French data only, you perform better on French data. And uh, if you're you're trained on several languages at the same time, uh, maybe it's easier. It's uh, harder for the model to, to perform on French data, but it's not always the case. So in our case, it was that, but it's not always the case. Hi, uh, thank you. So uh, I also observed with word sense induction, I mean, the safe measure can be quite tricky because and it also depends not only on the number of senses but also on the distribution yeah. I mean based if you take micro or macro but uh, yeah. so did you also compute ARI index I mean this ARI score ARI score? no so maybe it's interesting I mean this is also one of the scores that is quite okay. uh, frequently used and it's a bit different I mean probably also not perfect but maybe it's good uh, okay it has another view okay yeah, I didn't yeah, hear about it. Yeah. Just it from thing. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you. It was really yeah, interesting interesting uh, presentation and it is mostly about sense induction, but this uh, since this is valency dictionary uh, the question is, do you, like, next step, uh, do you have a kind of automated uh, work workflow also for the ident identification of uh, argument structure? So Yeah, so that's the second yeah. chapter of yes, my master's second, thesis. Yes, can yeah. you maybe just t talk more about your second chapter? Okay, <laughs> well, it's a no other topic. It will oh, be yes, long sure. to explain, um, but I could uh, refer to you, like I just deposited my, my memoir, so uh, it will be available soon, published. My dictionary also is uh, will be published, is published, it, it's on my GitHub anyway. So, um, but uh, basically we use the universal dependencies relations uh, and we used, um, uh, mm, how it's called, it's like, mm, 
I, I just looked at the frequency of the, of the patterns and I used a threshold. So between the, uh, behind the threshold, it's considered as noise and above it's considered as uh, good, uh, good patterns. Basically, that's how it works. Because we, are ha we have a similar project at the moment, so we are oh, really yeah, okay. looking forward for your results. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Sorry, maybe I missed it, but I'd like to ask, um, how do you determine the number of senses on the output of the algorithm? We have been to similar research, and this, this like um, seems one of the crucial questions. Yeah, we didn't want to set a number of senses because there is a way to, to set the algorithm f to do that, like find me three senses. But we didn't want to do that because we don't know the senses. So that's, yeah, that's something that we have to... <laughs> yes, but how, how did you actually do, do that? Because you had to do that, right? Uh, well, in our case, the agglomerative clustering, yes. uh, it's a distant, uh, the distance threshold. So it will depend on every verb, uh, the number of senses that will end up uh, being in the dictionary. So some verbs will have only one sense, some verbs will have three senses. Uh, it depends. Okay, thank you. B but we can, yeah, the distance threshold can be adjusted. If it's lower, we'll have more senses. If it's higher, we'll have less senses. But uh, yeah, it's a... Yeah, so you use the threshold within the... Yeah, word. exactly. Yes. That's the threshold we... Thank you. Okay, maybe we have time for one more, if there is any more question. Are you planning also to have like learner perspective for, for your dictionary? Like uh, who is the user group? Like uh, because Valencia dictionary is mostly they're compiled for learners, right? For those who don't speak, let's say French uh, yeah. is the first language. Yeah, that will be an interesting uh, next step <laughs> for another project. But uh, yeah, for now, uh, I won't <laughs> pursue that. <laughs> my, my master's thesis is done. So, but yeah, it would. It, there's plenty of things to do with this project. Of course, it can be uh, it ameliorated. Yeah. I think we still have time for one question more. So, anyone? Uh, if not. So we can continue our discussions uh, in the coffee table. Thank you very much. Thank you.